So I'm very happy to welcome Toby or TBSPRS, uh, who will give us um, a talk about uh, the very lifeline uh, of a lot of events. Uh, every uh, participant uh, of these events, of Carl's events, um, has experience with uh, some portion of uh, his project. Um, Toby um, is a maintainer or the maintainer for the Event Fahrplan project for Android. Um, he loves open source. Uh, he's a big uh, open data enthusiast and part of the Code for Germany lab in Berlin. And today he's giving us an update on um, the recent events in the Event Fahrplan project and all the stuff uh, that is um, planned for the future. So now um, for the next talk, State of Event Fahrplan 2021, Toby. Thank you. Welcome to my talk. I hope you had a good night and um, you enjoy lunch and this talk or one or the other, uh, or watch the recording in the future. So I will uh, give you an overview, as already told, and uh, also um, mention some things of the past and uh, also a, a quite a short introduction uh, if you don't know the project. Um, before I start, uh, there will be a question and answer session uh, afterwards. Um, the link can be found on the website and the app um, and in the question pad. Um, so you are very welcome to join. It will be a Jitsi room so we can actually talk and um, then you can ask all your questions um, offline without recording. So what is uh, Event Fahrplan or the DVOC schedule app? Uh, in this uh, event. Uh, it's an Android app where you can consume and um, read through the schedule of the event and um, see all the things, take your bookmarks and further things. Uh, works on a smartphone, it works on a tablet. And I uh, will quickly show you the basic features. Um, but before I do so, um, I'd like to acknowledge that I did not start this project with um, a person named Tux Mobile. Uh, at that time, the, um, the project was named Camp Farplan. And um, uh, I'm not the only one contributing to this project. There's many people. Big shout out to those. And um, you can be one of them. But for that later. Um, so. The main thing that you see when you open the app is uh, the schedule grid view. Uh, gives you an overview um, on the tablet or on a larger screen. Uh, there's more real estate, so you can see multiple columns, multiple rooms at one view. And um, But on the phone, you can swipe through. Uh, if you're in portrait mode or in landscape mode, you see what you see here on the screen um, up to four columns. And then it's easy to see um, which uh, session takes place in parallel. Um, you can take favorites. Uh, so you can mark your uh, a session as a favorite and then uh, organize them in a list. And you can even export them um, as plain text or JSON um, and you know do things with it um, or just share them uh, with uh, your fellow friends um, so they know what you like to see on, on, on a particular event and maybe join you. Um, yeah, and then uh, there's customized highlighting for the, for the grid view uh, that you can switch in the settings. Um, there's an alarm function, so you can be uh, notified uh, before the event uh, or before the session. And then you can set up the alarm time uh, if it's right at the start time or if you need like some, um, some time to go to that uh, room. At a real conference, that can be essential because sometimes the way from one room to another is quite long. Um, there's a... 
uh, change notification. So whenever the schedule changes, the app detects the changes and tells you about it. Um, there's a special screen schedule changes that uh, shows the actual differences. So green goes for a new and uh, orange is for changes. And then there's also red um, highlighting when, when a talk is canceled. Um, there's also uh, ways to configure this in the settings, um, but you can find that. Um, there's more features. Uh, actually, um, there's a calendar integration, so you can export your sessions or, um, or just single ones into your calendar. You can share it. I mentioned that before. You can vote and give feedback on the talks, and you should actually do that because uh, speakers like to hear what you think, and it's anonymous, and you can just tell anything that uh, is related to the talk. And there's integration with third-party apps. So at um, uh, at the Chaos Communication Congress, there was the C3Nav app uh, that allowed you to navigate indoor. And um, there is an integration where you can uh, go to a session in the app and then navigate to the place where it's happening, and it will actually show you the way. Um, the export feature that I mentioned before is uh, targeting the Chaos Flix app. So once you have picked your favorites and you want to see them um, in the group recordings, you can take that list, uh, export it for Cars Flix, and then watch all your favorite talks in this app. And last but not least, big shout out to all the angels, uh, the heralds, everyone here um, uh, helping for the event. And there's also some integration for the Angle system um, you can actually load your shifts, your personal shifts, into the app, and then there's a separate column, so you can see if you if you're working or if you can enjoy one of the sessions. Okay. Um, another thing that is uh, that happened last and the year before is translations. So there's. Um, uh, quite quite some uh, translations for the app, and that's mostly because of uh, Hacktoberfest, an online event where you can contribute to open source projects. And um, a lot of people that I already showed in, in the first uh, slide is um, translating the app, and um, that's why we have many languages. And when there's an event in your country, then you can uh, actually see the yeah, the app in the native language. Um, what must be translated uh, and separate is the, the descriptions of the um, talks. Those are not translated because they are uh, just read from the from the backend. Um, so. Shout out again, if you are uh, a native speaker, feel free to contribute with translations or just check the ones that we already have. Um, here's a short review of what happened in 2020. Um, there were some events and uh, don't try to like read the details. It's just uh, meant as an overview. So over the year, those green bubbles, there's a, quite some events happening. And um, I'm trying to cover those events with uh, an app and also updates. And But more than that, uh, I release versions in between. So those orange uh, dots are, are releases that happen uh, in a regular basis when I worked on, on the app and, and fix bugs, new features, et cetera. Um, but um, mostly I also release uh, before before an event, so there's time to see if the app works or breaks. Um, so in that year, there were uh, those events. There's uh, FOSTEM at, uh, in February. Um, then there was the FOSKIS conference, which happened actually uh, in real life uh, in March, it was like the last conference. Um, and then in April, first DVOC event, uh, and September, second DVOC event, and in um, September also the Datenspuren in Dresden, and in December the RC3 Congress. 
uh, very similar. In 2021, there was a FOSTEM conference, this time a virtual conference. And uh, in between, there were some releases, as you can see. And here we are at uh, the third DVOC in April. Um, to give you an idea of uh, what actually happens, uh, like how many people use the app on a big event, I uh, pasted in the statistics from the Chaos Communication Congress uh, in 2019. Uh, and that's like a typical uh, course, a curve of, uh, of user statistics. Um, of course, this is not the same in, in smaller events, but uh, the typical curve is what I mean is uh, right before the event, there uh, is a lot of people using the app and then over the year it flats down uh, because um, it's not that useful anymore. But uh, some people still keep it and it's useful if you want to review things or if you want to see the recordings and um, there's use cases. So let's talk about the highlights uh, of last year. Um, I already mentioned the Chaos Flix export. Um, um, so you can export your favorites. That uh, was added in 2020. Um, there was a really big rewrite of the date and time handling. So all over the app, there's dates and times for uh, for the events, for scheduling, yada, yada. There, there was an implementation that had quite some flaws. And uh, Ulik, an external contributor, took a lot of time and did a big rewrite. So right now we have like one central place where all the date and time handling happens. And that offered a lot of opportunities for fixing other bugs. So thank you a lot. Um, second big thing, uh, there was a, a performance problem in the app uh, when you actually navigate into a talk, into a session and then go back there was like a lag on 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 the device and there's a lot of uh, work has been done and um that's quite faster now so i hope you uh, enjoy it um there is a visual thing uh, customization for menu colors uh is uh can now be done according to the event uh so Right now, we have this green uh, color scheme, and uh, that's affecting the menus also. It wasn't before. Um, technical, uh, there's an Android X migration. So a lot of uh, libraries and, and uh, uh, Android were changed. And uh, I had to migrate a lot of things in the app. So that was, that's what was a big package. Um, then when you click on links, there was actually no touch feedback. You couldn't really see which one you clicked. And so there's a highlight right now that hopefully makes it easier to see which link you uh, tap. And uh, when you share um, an event for Twitter, any social media, then um, you can actually see a preview now. So we're using uh, the system UI now in the app and um, yeah, that makes it more comfortable. Um, I mentioned the translations already. Um, next, um, what became very obvious at uh, times of Corona and uh, virtual events was when you share a session uh, with somebody, it's quite important to, to know which time zone the event is happening. So I added uh, this information to the sharing text. So you really know when things happening. Um, there was a scrolling bug um, um, that didn't scroll to the right session. So you get a notification and then you tap on it, but it, it didn't actually scroll to the right position. Um, that has something to do with the date and time handling, as I mentioned. Um, the schedule update notification and the change dialog appeared quite often. And um, that uh, was uh, I was notified about that by the by some users, and I found some ways to reduce that. Um, so hopefully this is not uh, uh, affecting you too much now. Um, but let me know. Um, 
Uh, the date and time handling rewrite also enabled two other things. Uh, first, um, we have a summer and winter time in, in Germany. And um, when you actually look back at an event that happened in winter time and you're already in summertime, then the date and times didn't show up correctly. That's fixed now. And also um, very important for virtual events, if you're watching this from another time zone, so you're in California or somewhere else, the app should uh, uh, show the, the date and time uh, correctly in your time zone. You can enable that in the settings. Um, so you don't have to deal with German time zone uh, uh, times, but you can actually see your time. And last but not least, uh, there is a, I, I wrote a, a small script that allows me to check when f the alternative Play Store, um, is ready with deploying the app, and it sends me a notification. It's open source. Take a look if you like. Um, roadmap. So here's a few points that is open issues uh, where work has to be done. And um, I invite you very much to take a look and maybe help out if you like. And I go quickly through the list. So there's a lot of, of uh, rewrite uh, planned for um, the, the general architecture. So um, data should flow from, from the database into the UI. And um, I don't, don't go into details right now. Um, then we, I, I like to migrate from using an ID, which is a old uh, um, attribute in, in the data of, to a GUID um, that's already started. Take a look. Um, then there was a request to redesign the detail screen, so add duration information and maybe animations. That's interesting. Then for code coverage, quality of code, um, there could be some configuration in Sonar Cube. Um, people like to filter schedule changes by their favorites and not see all the schedule changes. Um, then accessibility, uh, I like to add a colorblind mode for uh, people. And then there's a idea of um, extending the binary concept concept of favorites because it's like have a favorite or don't have a favorite but allow uh, multiple tags on a session so you can actually decide on your own how you like to tag a session one uh, example that comes into mind is something like watch later and then uh, you can actually uh, filter the list for for your recordings quite easily then uh, another one is that the emails and web addresses are not always clickable in the app. Uh, so that should be an easy one. And uh, there's a search function uh, missing, which is quite useful if you attend um, events with, with a lot of sessions and it's hard to find stuff. Um, I use bitmap uh, icons uh, instead of vector icons in the app, which is not state of the art in Android. So those could be a change, but you know, somebody has to do it. Um, the current value uh, of the settings and the setting screen uh, should be shown. That's also an easy one, I guess. And then um, accessibility again um, uh, would be good if someone could do a review with the TalkBack app from Google or any other tool uh, to see how good um, the app is actually uh, usable uh, via TalkBack. And yeah, for uh, CI builds, it would be interesting to uh, in integrate with GitHub Actions and um, also to have a release build uh, being tested and um, continuously uh, being built. And that's not everything. There's the issue tracker. The link is there on the slide. And um, I welcome you to um, send me your ideas and um, and also help out if you want. Um, I'd like to mention that I 
work on this alone most of the time. There's contributions from time to time, but it's a lot of work. And um, there's this bus factor, bus factor thing. Um, so I really want you to think if you can help in any ways. And there's a lot of things that you can do. Um, it's not all programming. Uh, you can actually tell me about how you use the app and if there's use cases that I never saw because I'm in my tunnel. Um, but uh, there's all things. If you are good at design uh, or if you actually want to uh, code, you can jump in. There's easy tasks, there's hard tasks. Um, you can financially support me. Um, you can... Um, because I'm doing this also in my spare time a lot. Um, and there's a translation task, as I mentioned. Um, and you can uh, actually join the beta tester group. Uh, so you can actually upfront test what's going on in the app, if everything works. And then um, hopefully it doesn't crash at the actual event, but before. Uh, the app is open source. I invite you very much. It's a Apache 2.0 licensed. Um, I use Kotlin uh, as the programming language and uh, also Java, um, but transitioning to Kotlin slowly, but quite, quite, uh, quite a lot already. And that's it. Um, as I mentioned uh, at 10 past one, there will be a question and answer session. The li link can be found in the questions pad or on the website or in the app. And um, yeah, that's it. Uh, thank you for your attention. And um, the slides will be online. I put the link in the um, talk description. And now I'm open to questions from you. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Toby, for your talk. And uh, now we, I, I feel the questions rushing into the pad, but uh, we have a little delay with the stream, so uh, that might take a second. Um, if you have questions right now, uh, please write them into the pad. You find the link uh, in the um, talk description. Um, but there is already one question there. So um, what does it say? For adding angel shifts, if the app already knows the link to the heaven precondition, is it possible to only import the key without the link? Mm, yeah, so the, the link to your personal angel shift is, is quite long and there's like an individual key at the, at the end. And when I uh, added this feature, I I thought it would be easier to copy the whole link and paste it because you're doing this on the mobile phone. So you copy the whole thing and then paste it. Um, but if it's easier to copy the, the, the ID, um, then I can change that. Um, so we should actually talk about that because I thought it's easier to copy the whole thing. Um, yeah, but technically, that's no problem. OK, no links so far and no further questions so far. We can wait a little bit to uh, to see uh, whether there are more questions coming in. Yeah. I, so I, the, I, the, the now now the first thing that comes in is thanks for the great app, which I uh, second because uh, it's uh, as as I said in the beginning a uh, bit of the lifeline for for every participant. Yeah, the, I I like to um, use the time to say again like I I'm living from this feedback feedback from people because there's actually no uh, no tracking no. Um, statistics in the app. So I'm uh, quite blind about how many people use this. The only thing is what, what uh, Google Play Store tells me. But if people are installing via Android, which is totally fine, uh, I see like nothing. And um, so I'm very dependent on, on your feedback. Um, and that can be in many things. Uh, so 
you can actually uh, say how you use the app and, and tell me your use cases. Um, that helps a lot. And quite lately, the, somebody wrote an issue um, on GitHub and did a large description of how he uses the app. And I found like new things that I never thought of. And um, of course, you can go on Google Play and vote for the app. And then like it's uh, other people say that, that, that you like the app. Um, but you could also like tweet about it or write on your blog or, or share on social media that there's an app. Because sometimes people actually don't know that there is an app. And um, and last but not least, uh, if you know of any event that is very similar or any event that you like and they don't have an app, um, mm -hmm. just contact me and maybe we can set it up for the event. Um, either you can do that or I can do that. I mean, it's open source. You can also do that. Very good. Yeah, uh, the, the feedback is coming in. So uh, one feedback is I use the Android version and I really appreciate the compatibility with Android 4.x. So uh, I, yeah, I, also, I, I also have an Android 4 device back there and uh, that's my, my designated chaos phone. Yeah, I'm trying to keep that. It's quite hard sometimes because external dependencies, they, they like like to change. Um, but I actually read that tweet, uh, read that tweet uh, yesterday, and yeah, I mean, for me, I, I I don't see a reason to to raise that. But sometimes it's just uh, Google and other parties that uh, force me to to raise it. Mm. So there was an addition to the um, to the angel shift question. So. Um... Perhaps two input boxes, one for the whole link and for one for the key only. We are getting into the nitty gritty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, actually, okay. I, I, I will actually have a look at the uh, Angle system if they changed it and make, made it easier to copy the link, maybe. I haven't take, uh, taken a look uh, lately. Mm. Uh, one question you you mentioned that uh, you could adapt the app to uh, other events. Uh, how difficult is it to adapt that to different events, and uh, does it take up a lot of your time uh, to adapt to certain conditions and availabilities for other events? The answer is, as always, it depends. Um, the app works best with uh, when the back back end uh, is uh, pre talks or or frap, um, and there's like a compatible uh, format of the schedule file. Um, but if that isn't the case, uh, then there's ways to um, like exchange the parser and the, the the network module. I did that already for uh, several events. So there's a Android conference, the DroidCon. I did it there. They use a different backend, and then it's more work, of course. And uh, besides that, if it's like the the, the normal event, um, there goes a lot of time into customization of colors, icons, uh, the whole social media thing, like setting up the Play Store, writing texts and uh, preparing screenshots and stuff that is re really not technical in, in a particular way, but takes a lot of time. And so I, um, yeah, I at least need two days to like do the other work. And then of course there can be technical things that the backend changed um, and um, new bugs and stuff like that. So there's another question forming right before my eyes. It's not finished yet. <laughs> um, but uh, <laughs> further down in the pads, uh, there are uh, many thanks and appreciations uh, piling up. So uh, everybody seems to be very happy with your work. So uh, may may maybe an anecdote. I had the Angel Desk and the app on two different devices, so I needed to type. I need to type. I need to type. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. If you write the whole URL, it's quite, I mean, you don't want to type that. Ah, so because you couldn't copy and paste. Oh, I get it. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. The uh, next question is. Uh, 
not not a complete sentence yet, but I will try to start with it. Uh, when a Linux app via app image or from build source code. Thanks. Hmm. I, I I didn't get it. Maybe for the uh, asking person, maybe you could rephrase it. Or no, just have... join the session uh, uh, afterwards, and uh, yes. we can sort it out. Okay, let's wait for a for a minute to uh, if, if there comes anything more. Um, if we don't get any more questions right now. We can, yeah, as, as you already mentioned, uh, there will be a, a dedicated Q&A set, session um, as a self-organized session at uh, um, uh, 13.10, so 1.10 p.m. Uh, and the link is also in the pad, but the link is also um, in the uh, self-organized sessions uh, list uh, starting uh, at 1.10. And I'd like to mention that I also speak German. So if English is a problem, there's uh, the opportunity that we talk Deutsch. Yes. Yeah, so uh, actually it's in about 10 minutes. So uh, it's a chance to take a break, go and grab something to eat or go to the toilet. And then we can meet again. And um, yeah, thanks a lot for uh, your questions and um, all the thumbs up. Yes, I would say also that uh, all the other um, uh, issues and also praises. So if, if you just want to say uh, thank you, great work, you can also join the session. Why not? Uh, so um, use the link, use the, uh, use the Q&A meeting later on. And yeah, well, I would say uh, this leaves me only uh, to say uh, thank you for your presentation and uh, also the hard work that uh, the presentation is based on. Um, and yeah, uh, keep keep up the good work and have have a very good event, everyone. Same to you. Thank you for moderating. <laughs>